is the Wacky Rig Cinco the way to fish? Today, you and I are gonna talk about that. But before we go on, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. If you're new, comment below and tell me what you think. Comment below and say I subbed, so I can at least make sure that I comment back and say hi. So, without further ado, let's catch some fish. So just some background information about the evolution of the worm. It was created back in the late 40s and at that point when it was created by th two guys that just were mingling with vinyl and epoxies and all other stuff to create a worm, they had no clue that it would be the single, in my opinion, greatest, greatest achievement for bass fishermen. It was the number one lure then, and it's the number one lure now. It's caught the most fish out of any lure that we know of. And today, that's why we're talking about the stickworm, the Cinco. Now, I'll be honest, it's not my favorite way to fish, but it's probably the best thing that I do. And there's many reasons why. First, you gotta have a lot of patience to fish a wacky rig. It's a lot slower, it's a lot more finesse, and sometimes it just isn't fun. However, in this video, hopefully I can teach you some of the techniques I use, from weighted to unweighted, that you can use at any time when you're struggling or just when you wanna catch fish, because it catches fish, for sure. I use it on a spinning rod, and probably 95% of the time I have it weighted in the front. And there's a reason why. I want it, I want a different action with the Cinco. So I like to fish the Cinco two ways. This way would be just regular, you know, just weightless. And as it, you cast that, it is very skippable and it'll float and flutter down in the water column. Now, I like to use it unweighted when I'm on a boat and I'm fishing lily pads or I'm fishing uh, places where I can see some structure, where I want that slow fall. Most of the time, like 95% of the time, I use it like this. I have a little bullet weight on the front. I don't know if that's seeable. And I have a two-aught hook tied to braid. And that's exactly how I rig it, exactly like that. Hopefully you can see that. I want the bait to slowly go down as I cast it. And as I pull it, I want it to go like this and then pop back and flutter down. I like to just give subtle rod twitches, just a quick up, bump, bounce, bounce, just so that, rate will, that bait will go, you know, boom, boom, and then fall back down and sit there. I find that if I'm in heavy cover, or I'm in places that have lots of grass, or I have edges that I want to hit. This is the way I fish. It's, it's really the way I fish 95% of the time. I will say, there's a lot of people that make great Cinco's and stick baits, and this is the DOA Cal 5 inch. I found that on average, I probably get seven to 10 fish per each one of these, and, I, and most of the time they break where the O-ring is, which is perfectly fine. Um, because I feel if I get seven or 10 fish out of one bait that probably cost me 25 cents, I'm in good shape. The weight in front is usually, I don't know the weight, I'll put a little thing up here that says what the weight I normally is, but I normally, generally it's a two-out hook too. I was gonna say, these aren't heavily salted. I found that if you use a really heavily salted Cinco, you end up getting more tears in that Cinco. Uh, not that the DOA is like the Elaztec from Z-Man, but the plastic is real durable for a Cinco, just like the Yamamoto Cinco, it's very durable. So while there's a lot of people that use all sorts of different ones, you can use the Strike King one, the Ocho, I think it's called. There's a lot of them that are great out there. I just stick with the one that I've been confident in and the one that I've done the best with. To start off, this is what I'm using, a one piece, Temple Fork Outfitters Tactical Bass Elite Rod. 
Um, this is a seven foot three one. It's medium he heavy. I'm using 10 pound Power Pro on a Stratic. New Stratic. Now I'm using, like I said, the DOA worm and I have it weighted in the front, but also the key that I do is I do use an O-ring and I make it so that the bait is weedless. So I push it back so that when it comes through the grass, it's coming through like that. It's gonna sink like this, and then every time I'm twitching it, I want the bait to, to fold for a second and then snap back. But I want it to sink downward fast. Here in Florida, we have a lot of grass. So getting through that grass is kind of, is important. Here's my thought on the O-ring. While it hurts the bait a little bit because it tears them up a little bit faster, I like the action you get from the, that O-ring. I like that you can rig it backwards or put the push the, the hook the opposite direction than going forward, and it allows you to go through the cover and your weeds a lot better without getting it hooked up and snagged. But you do use more baits because of it. So I'm just looking for that action. And uh, like I said, the, the the TFO rod that I'm using, the seven foot three rod, is just spectacular. Uh, like I said, medium heavy and very fast action, and that's what I'm looking for. I don't want a slow rod here. I want something that as soon as I hit, get that bite, I can feel it and then hammer it. So to start off, I like to try to fish edges. As I walk around this pond, I'm gonna make casts where the water starts. 10 or 15 feet outside of that shoreline and then slowly work my way out to the deeper water. Now it isn't that I don't know that there's, it doesn't mean that there isn't more fish out in the deeper water because during the summer the fish are going to go to deeper water as is, especially down here in Florida, but there's better ambush points closer to the shoreline. So they can find themselves grass or oh, inside I got a, a big lily fish. pad, underneath a lily pad, or anything like that. And that is an ambush point for a bass to hide in. They'll sit two or three feet off the shoreline waiting for something to this come in. This is giant! Now here's one of the things I tell people when I am talk about frog fishing. When I make my first cast, I want to cast into onto the other side's grass. I know that sounds crazy, and it might be, but I want my first initial drop to be right on the weed line. Oh my God! Exactly on the weed line. Or if I'm looking for, uh, there's a bunch of lily pads, my goal is to land it on top of a lily pad and slowly shake it for the bait to fall off. As the bait falls off or comes off that edge, the bass is initial has never seen anything, has not seen a water splash, has not seen it go over its head. All it sees is something falling down in front of their, their face. I think Larry the Cable Guy said, the funniest thing about bass fishermen is that uh, if somebody dropped a pot pie out of the sky, wouldn't you just take a bite out of it? That's exactly what happens with a worm. If you bring it over the edge and it, that first initial thing is just the drop off that edge, that bass is just going to give it a reaction strike and hammer it. So cast into that grass or the other side of the bank or whatever it is and make it bounce into the water instead of casting to the edge and doing it that way you're gonna find yourself getting better, more and better strikes. So I'm gonna be honest, I've filmed this three times. I've had three different shirts on, which is crazy. Uh, nothing like uniformity. Uh, but what I think most people are gonna find in this is that you're gonna get lots of little strikes, a lot of little bass. Now a little bass is just gonna come up and hammer it, where the big bass is gonna open its mouth, suck it up, and it's just gonna, you're barely gonna feel it. One of the things a friend used to tell me is, hook sets are free. Now while you're walking through grass and you're dealing with grass and other things, there's going to be a lot of times where you set the hook on grass. It's all right. They're free. Better safe than sorry. But as you start to work and start to learn what the difference is of the feel between grass and a bite, you'll find yourself working that bait over the grass. You'll find yourself bringing it up to that grass and then bouncing it over, knowing that's a grass, not a bite. So, remember, if you think you got a bite, set the hook. It's nothing, it's free. It's the best advice I can give you. So hopefully you found this interesting uh, and informative. I hope this helps you catch more fish, especially with 
what I think is the best lure on the market, even though I hate using it. Uh, and if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. If you're new, make sure you comment below and tell me what you think. And how did I do? Remember, take your kid fishing, get your fish on. We'll see y'all soon. Cheers. Hit like and subscribe. Take your um kids fishing. <laughs>